So, I'd like to welcome, welcome you to tonight's Bible study. Tonight, uh, we're going to be taking a look at um, an attitude, um, a, a, uh, a certain way of looking at things. For instance, we have a walk with God, and God has blessed us with different talents, with different abilities, with different offices. And we're going to look at, do we do these things because we're wanting to please God, because we want to want to do it for God, or are we going up there to be to put on a show and, and to impress men? So tonight we're going to take a look at that. The title of tonight's Bible study is A Relationship with God versus a show for men. So starting off tonight, in the book of Romans, Apostle Paul gives us sobering advice. He tells us not to think too highly of ourselves. We should understand that what we do, what we are able to do, are all gifts from God. Um, they, they, they aren't of ourselves, they're, they're gifts of God. This month's theme for the month says it well. In Romans chapter 12, verses, verses 12 and 3, that's Romans chapter 12, verse 3, it says, For I say, through the grace of God given unto me, to every man that is among you, not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think, but to think soberly, according as God hath dealt to every man, measure the fi- every man the measure of faith. God calls us to be a testimony. The theme for Wednesday night for the Wednesday night Bible study team is Philippians chapter four verse eight, and in verse nine, Apostle Paul tells the Philippians to follow his example and to do and to do what they have learned, received, and seen in him. So. Paul was an example. So in Philippians chapter 4, verses 8 and 9, we read, Finally, brethren, uh, uh, did I see give the verse? So it's Philippians chapter 4, verses 8 and 9, and it says, Finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, whatever things are just, what, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are of good report, if there be any virtue, if there be any praise, think on these things. Those things which you have both learned and received and heard and seen in me do, and the God of peace shall be with you. In the book of Matthew, Jesus said, Jesus tells us that we are a light on a hill. When we, are, when we get saved and we accept Jesus Christ into our lives, God's spirit shines through us. In Matthew chapter 5, verses 13 through 16, it says, Ye are the salt of the earth, but if the salt hath lost its savior, wherewith shall it be salted? It is henceforth good for nothing but to be cast out and to be trodden under the foot of men. Ye are the light of the world. A city that is set on a hill cannot be hid. Neither do men light a candle and put it under a bushel, but on a candlestick, and it giveth light light unto all that are in the house. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. So we are supposed to shine God's light. Our works and our actions are supposed to be to the glory of God our, our Father which is in heaven. Our good works are not for us to put on a show. We're not supposed to be putting on a routine for our own glory. Did you ever see somebody that uh, committed, uh, did an act of charity or, or gave you know, to a charity or did something like that, and, and they want to make a big, huge deal out of it? It's like they want everyone to pour out accolades and, and praise on, all the, on how wonderful they are and, and what they just did. Never mind the humiliation of the person to whom they are providing the charity. They just want to, hey, hey, look, aren't I wonderful? When we give alms, we are not supposed to sound the trumpet and let everyone know that we are providing alms. That's the show. We're supposed to give alms as unto our Lord and Savior, whether anyone knows it or not. We are supposed to be putting, we are not supposed to be putting on a show. But if we choose that, Jesus says that we have no reward from our Father in heaven. The only reward we're going to get is the attention we receive that other men give us. 
in Matthew chapter 6, verses 1 through 3, it says, Take heed that you do not your alms before men to be seen of them. Otherwise, you have no reward of your Father which is in heaven. Therefore, when thou doest thine alms, do not sound the trumpet before thee as the hypocrites do in the synagogues and in the streets, that they may have the glory of men. Verily I say unto you, they have their reward. But when thou doest alms, let not thy left hand know what thy right hand doeth, that thine alms may be in secret, and thy father which seeth in secret himself shall reward thee openly. When we give alms, we should do it because there is a need. And those that have good hearts do it because they want to help. They're not interested in the attention. But what are alms? Well, Strong's Concordance tells us it is from G1656, compassionateness, for example, as exercise towards the poor, uh, beneficence, or concretely, a benefaction, alms, deeds. In other words, it is an act of compassion. You see a need and you have the heart to meet that need, and because you can meet that need, you just do it. Whether people see it or not, it doesn't matter. In Webster's Dictionary, it says anything given gratu gratuitously to relieve the poor as money, food, or clothing, otherwise called charity. Another thing that, that we do that we can either do because we're doing it out of our hearts to God or we can do it as a show is prayer. Prayer is our communication to God. It is between us and God. What we pray because we know we we know we need to but there is that temptation to put on a show and to be seen of men jesus tells us when we pray we should pray in secret and then he will reward us openly in matthew chapter 6 verses 5 through 7 it says and when thou prayest thou shalt not be as the hypocrites are for they love to pray standing in the synagogues and in the corners of the streets that they may be seen of men verily i say unto you they have their reward but thou when thou prayest, enter into thy closet, and when thou hast shut thy door, pray to thy, pray to thy Father which is in secret, and thy Father which seeth in secret shall reward thee openly. But when ye pray, use not vain repetitions as the heathen do, for they think that they shall be heard for their much speaking. Be not, be not ye therefore like unto them, for your Father knoweth what things ye have need of before ye ask him. Jesus tells us that when we pray that Jesus tells us that when we pray in secret God rewards us openly. He also tells us not to use vain rep repetitions as the heathen do. The Abbott New Testament Testament commentary puts it this way. Vain repetitions, long prayers full of sameness and repetition and made through ostentation or spiritual pride. Protracted seasons of devotion in extraordinary emergencies or in seasons of great trial or suffering when the soul is earnest and sincere are not condemned. Our Savior himself sometimes spent the night in prayer. In other words, I can pray loud and long repetitive prayers thinking I'm impressing all the people around me. Or I can spend a long time in prayer because I have a real need and there's something on my heart, not because I want to put on a show. In Luke chapter 20, verses 46 through 47, it says, Beware of the scribes which desire to walk in long robes and love greetings in the markets and the highest seats in the synagogues and the chief rooms at, at feasts which devour wid widows' houses and for a show make long prayer, the same shall receive greater damnation. Jesus warns us of the scribes and the Pharisees. He, he warns us that for a show, they like to make long, they make, like to make long prayer, but they're, not, they're only doing it for a show. They do it to draw attention to themselves, not because they care about the need that they're supposed to be praying about. God knows they, they're, they're doing it because they want to show off themselves. God knows where our heart is at. He searches us. He knows us. So there's nothing that we can say or do that he doesn't know. He knows what our intents are. In Psalms chapter 139, verses 1 through 4, it says, To the chief musician, a psalm of David, 
O Lord, thou hast searched me and known me. Thou knowest my down sittings and my uprisings. Thou understandest my thought afar off. Thou compassest my path and my lying down and art acquainted with all my ways. For there is not a word in my tongue, but lo, O Lord, thou knowest it altogether. God knows the intent of our hearts. Are we doing things to be seen of men? Are we doing our oblations because we know that we need God's blessings in our lives? God, speaking through the prophet Isaiah, told the people, told the people of what he thought of their vain oblations and their vain sacrifices. It wasn't that they weren't giving. It wasn't that they weren't doing what they what they were supposed to do in a sense, but he saw what was going on within them. They were doing their oblations and their sacrifices, but they were not living the way they were supposed to. In Isaiah chapter 29, verse 13, it says, Wherefore the Lord said, For as much as this people draw near me with their mouth, and with their lips do honor me, but have removed their heart far from me, and their fear toward me is taught by precept of men. Precept of men, meaning that they teach their own views about God. Oh, I think this, I think that. They are not teaching the scriptures. They are not teaching the true word of God. In Isaiah chapter 1, verses 11 through 15, we read this. To what purpose is the multitude of your sacrifices unto me, saith the Lord? I am full of the burnt offerings of rams and the fat of fed beasts, and I delight not in the blood of bullocks or of lambs or of he goats. When ye come to appear before me, who hath required this at your hand to tread my courts? Bring no more vain oblations. Incense is an abomination unto me. The new moons and the Sabbaths, the calling of assemblies, I cannot away with. It is an iniquity, even the solemn meeting. Your new moons and your appointed feasts, my soul hateth. They are a trouble unto me. I am weary to bear them. And when you spread forth your hands, I will hide mine eyes from you. Yea, when ye make many prayers, I will not hear. Your hands are full of blood. So God said he would hide his eyes, his eyes from them when they make many prayers. He would not hear them because they weren't doing, they weren't doing it out of a sincere heart. They weren't doing it for the right reasons. Another thing is fasting. How, why do we fast? Going back to Matthew chapter 6, we learn fasting is another thing that we are to keep between us and God. We don't fast because we want to impress other people. We keep our fast between us and God so that God will reward us openly. In Matthew chapter 6, verses 16 through 18, it says, Moreover, when you fast, be not as the hypocrites of sad countenance, for they disfigure their faces that they may appear unto men to fast. Verily I say unto you, they have their reward. But thou, when thou fastest, anoint thine head and wash thy face, that thou appear not to fast unto men, but unto thy father which is in secret, and thy father which seeth in secret shall re re reward thee openly. What is the attitude behind the fast? Is it just for someone to say that they're fasting? A fast is between the individual and God. It is not so the individual can lift himself up and, and, and lift himself above other people and say, look at me, I'm, I'm fasting more than you. I'm, I'm more spiritual than you. In Luke chapter 18, verses 9 through 14, it says, And he spake this parable unto certain which trusted in themselves that they were righteous and despised others. Two men went up into the temple to pray, the one a Pharisee, the other a publican. The Pharisee stood and prayed thus with, with, with himself, God, I thank thee that I am not as other men are, extortioners, unjust, adulterers, or even as this publican. I fast twice in the week. I give tithes of all that I possess. And the publican standing afar off would not lift up so much as his eyes unto heaven, but smote upon his breast saying, God be merciful unto me, a sinner. I tell you, this man went down to his house justified rather than the other. For everyone that exalteth himself shall be abased, and he that humbleth himself shall be exalted. Fasting is not for us to exalt ourselves and to brag on how much we've done. 
the scripture in Luke gives us an example of someone who fasts so he can think he's above someone else. However, you can read in the book of Isaiah in chapter, in Isaiah chapter 58 verses 1 through 12 about the proper attitude in fasting. In verses 3 and 4, we read this. Isaiah chapter 58 verses 3 and 4 says, Wherefore have we fasted, say they, and thou seest not? Wherefore have we afflicted our soul, and thou takest no knowledge? Behold, in the day of your fast ye find pleasure. You exact all your labors. Behold, ye fast for strife and debate, and to smite with the fist of wickedness. Ye shall not fast as ye do this day, to make your voice to be heard on high. You see, they ask, they ask God, why is it you don't see us fasting? We afflict our souls and you see it not. God tells them through the prophet Isaiah that they are doing it for the wrong reasons. They are exacting all their labors. Look at what all we're doing. Look at how many times I'm fasting in the week. He, he, he was telling them that they are fasting for strife and debate. Like the Pharisee in Luke that brags about how he fasts twice in the week and stands there and tells God all the great stuff he's doing. He's doing it for show. As Jesus said in Matthew chapter 6, when we keep our fast to ourselves and when we fast for the right reason, God will reward us openly. In Isaiah chapter 58 verses 8 through 12, God speaks and states that when they choose to fast for the right reasons, they shall be blessed. Then they shall become the restorer of paths to dwell in. In verses 8 and 9, we read this. Isaiah 58 verse 8 and 9 says, Then shall thy light break forth as the morning, and thine health shall spring forth speedily, and thy righteousness shall go before thee, the glory of the Lord shall be thy re-reward. Then shalt thou call, and the Lord shall answer. Thou shalt cry, and he shall say, Here I am, if thou take away from the midst of thee the yoke, the putting forth of the finger, and speaking of vanity. When we pray and seek God with a right heart, then God uses us for his purpose. We will be guided continually, and God will use us. Jesus tells us not to lay up for ourselves treasure, treasures on the earth. You could say that earthly glory and the desire for accolades is an earthly treasure some will seek. Earthly glory is only for a moment. Heavenly glory is for a lifetime. When we are looking to put on a show for men, we get earthly rewards. In Matthew chapter 6, verses 19 through 24, it says, Lay not up for yourselves treasures upon the earth, where moth and rust doth corrupt, and where thieves break through and steal. But lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven, where neither moth nor rust doth corrupt, and where thieves do not break through or steal. For where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. The light of the body is the eye. If therefore thine eye be single, thy whole body shall be full of light. But if thy eye be evil, thy whole body shall be full of darkness. If therefore the light that is in thee be darkness, how great is that darkness. No man can serve two masters, for either he will hate the one and love the other, or else he will hold to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and mammon. We are not here for the accolades of men. But if that's where our heart is at, if that is what we crave, then that is our treasure. Let us not be tempted away by the desire to be the big preacher or, or to be the great entertainer. If my eye becomes evil, then my whole body becomes, becomes filled with darkness. I am no longer doing the things for the right reasons. I'm doing the things for my own, own, personal, own personal uplifting. There are people who claim this, to speak the word of the Lord. They claim to be prophets of God, and yet that is a dangerous claim to make. Jeremiah chapter 14 and Jeremiah chapter 23 tell us that prophesying is not something that God takes lightly. There are consequences when someone claim, claims that they, are pro, that they are speaking prophecy, but God has, is not actually speaking through them. I'm not going to read these chapters here, but it would be a good idea 
to read those chapters to know that prophecy is not to be used to put on a show for men. There should be, actually, there should be kind of a fear in speaking prophecy. Throughout the scriptures, we are warned that there were and are and will be false prophets. Peter warns us that there will be false teachers. That is why we have to know the scripture so that, when, so that we do know when they are among us, we can recognize it. In 2 Peter chapter 2, verse 1, it says, But there were false prophets also among the people, even as there shall be false teachers among you, who privately, sh who privately shall bring in damnable heresies, even denying the Lord that brought them, and bring upon themselves swift destruction. There are many more scriptures that warn us about false prophets, but I'm not going to take the time to cover them here. But we have to take heed. We don't want to be pleasers of men looking to speak prophecy to win their approval. We, we don't want to speak prophecy to, to, to make somebody think, think well of us. You can read more about examples. You can see some examples of where they try that in, in Jeremiah chapter 28, verses 1 through 17, and in 2 Kings chapter 22. I'm not going to read them here due to time. How do we know if we have a false prophet on our hands? Or worse yet, how do we know that we aren't actually prophesying falsely? Here's what Moses said. In Deuteronomy chapter 18, verses 20 through 22, it says, But the prophet, which shall presume to speak a word in my name, which I have not commanded him to speak, or that shall speak in the name of other gods, even that prophet shall die. And if thou shalt say in thine heart, how shall we know the word the word which the Lord hath not spoken. When a, prop, when a prophet speaketh in the name of the Lord, if the thing follow not, nor come to pass, that is the thing which the Lord hath not spoken. But the prophet hath spoken it presumptuously. Thou shalt not be afraid of him. Thou, you, you should not have, a respect, have respect for someone like that. And if they speak something, and they, there's a lot of people out there who speak, spoke a lot of things, and you look and you see it doesn't come to pass, then you know there's, there's a problem there. So we are not supposed to be putting on a show. We're not supposed to be putting on a performance to get the accolades of men. Yet there are spiritual gifts. Paul did say we should seek to prophesy. We do need to pray. So what should we do? We should seek to edify. We are not here to put on a show. We are here to edify and uplift our brothers and sisters. Apostle Paul says we should seek for spiritual gifts, but it should be for the edification of the church, not for a show. In 1 Corinthians chapter 14, verses 1 through 5, we read, Follow after charity and desire spiritual gifts, but rather that ye may prophesy. For he that speaketh in an unknown tongue speaketh not unto men, but unto God. For no man understandeth him, howbeit in the spirit he speaketh mysteries. But he that, pro he that prophesieth speaketh unto men to edification and exhortation and comfort. He that speaketh in an unknown tongue edifieth himself, but he that prophesieth edifieth the church. I would that ye all spake with tongues, but rather that ye prophesied. For greater is he that prophesieth than he that speaketh with tongues, except he interpret that the tongue may receive edifying. So Paul goes on and he asks the Corinthians, how is it when they came together? How is it that everyone had a psalm? How is it everyone had a doctrine? How is it everybody had a revelation? But what, is it, what good are all those things unless it is to edify the church? In 1 Corinthians chapter 14, verses, uh, verses 26 through 28, it says, How is it then, brethren, when you come together, every one of you hath a psalm, hath a doctrine, hath a tongue, hath a revelation, hath an interpretation. Let all things be done unto edifying. If any man speak in an unknown tongue, let it be by two, or at the most by three, and that by course, and let one interpret. But if there be no interpreter, let him keep silence in the church and let him speak to himself and to God. Unknown tongues have their place, 
but it is not for the edification of the church unless there is an interpreter that can expound to the church what is being said. So I'm not telling you not to speak in tongues. If God takes over your tongue and takes over your mouth in truth, then there's nothing you can do about it anyway. You're, you're going to speak. There, you won't be able to stop it. But Paul is saying when you come together and there's no interpreter, well, again, as we just read in 1 Corinthians 14, 28, um, let's keep silence in the church. Um, so we can have all the spiritual gifts in the world. We can have all kinds. But we can do all kinds of good works, but it, they must be done out of charity. Again, what is charity? Charity, in the strongest concordance, is, the definition is, from G25, love. For example, affection or benevolence. Especially, plural, a love feast. Feast of, charitably, dear love. Many of us know 1 Corinthians chapter 13. It speaks about how we can have all the gifts in the world, but it means nothing without charity. Time will not permit me to read this chapter, but it does teach us we can be great orators, speaking great words of wisdom and knowledge, yet if it is not done in charity, if we don't have the desire to edify and to, and to lift up, then then we're doing nothing but putting on a show. If, we, if we're not doing it to, to lift up our brothers and sisters and to expound and to teach, to teach and, we're, and if we're not doing it out of, out of, for edification, then, then we're just putting on a show. We can demonstrate all kinds of knowledge and wisdom, but the Bible says knowledge can puff up, can puff us up. In other words, make us heady and high-minded, but it is charity that edifies. In 1 Corinthians chapter 8, verses 1 through 3, it says, Now as touching things offered unto idols, we know that we all have knowledge. Knowledge puffeth up, but charity edifieth. And if any man think that he knoweth anything, he knoweth nothing yet as he ought to know. But if any man love, get, love God, the same is known of him. So going back to Isaiah chapter 1, we read, we, we just got done reading a while ago in verses 11 through 15 that God was displeased with all their ablations and sacrifices that were done just to say they did them, just to put on a show. But now we will read that God did give them a remedy. He told them how to fix their condition. In Isaiah chapter 1, verses 16 through 18, we read, wash you, make you clean. Put away the evil of your doings from before mine eyes. Cease to do evil. Learn to do well. Seek judgment. Relieve the oppressed. Judge the fatherless. Plead for the widow. Come now, let us reason together, saith the Lord. Though your sins be as scarlet, they shall be white as snow. Though they be red like crimson, they shall be as wool. So he told them to put away the evil. He told them to clean up and repent. Get close to him. God will hear those that, that are near unto him. It says in Psalms that he is near to those that call on him in spirit and in truth. Those that truly fear him, he will hear their cry, but the wicked he will destroy. In Psalms chapter 145, verses 18 through 21, it says, The Lord is nigh unto all of them that call upon him, to all that call upon him in truth. He will fulfill the desires of them that fear him. He also will hear their cry and save them. The Lord preserveth all them that love him, but all the wicked will he destroy. My mouth shall, sp shall speak the praise of the Lord and let all flesh bless his holy name forever and ever. So we, as we just read, the Lord preserves those that love him. The wicked he will destroy. So, we are here to comfort one another. We are not here to put on a show. We are here to lift each other up and to edify. In 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verses 11 through 15, it says, Wherefore, comfort yourselves together and edify one another, even as ye also, even as ye also do. And we beseech you, brethren, to show them which labor, to, show, to know them which labor among you, and are over you in the Lord and admonish you. 
and to esteem them very very highly in love for their work's sake. And be at peace among yourselves. Now we exhort you, brethren, warn them that are unruly, comfort the feeble-minded, support the weak, be patient toward all men. See that none re, re See that none render evil for evil unto any man, but ever follow that which is good, both among yourselves and all men. So, in conclusion, this is not a show. Our walk with God is real. He saved us. He cleansed us. And we are to be that light that shines in the darkness, not actors that perform for the darkness. Do all things unto the Lord. And I will conclude with this scripture. Colossians chapter 3, verses 23 and 24. And whatsoever ye do, do it heartily as to the Lord and not unto men, knowing that of the Lord ye shall receive the reward of inheritance, for ye serve the Lord Christ.